Hello and welcome to Face to Face. On today's program, I'm joined with a special guest, a dear friend. God is using this man mightily. Pastor Steve O'Paul is the senior leader of all nations in the United Kingdom. Today on Face to Face, we're going to be talking to you about what it means to be wounded and how to overcome the wounds that sometimes can happen as we walk out our faith in Christ. You know, Paul wrote to the church in Ephesians 6, he said that you would be strengthened with might in the inner man to put on the whole armor of God. You know, I've learned in ministry and, and in many things that, that God has called us to do and to be, that sometimes you can win, but still be wounded. I've seen God use people mightily, yeah. but in their lives, there's, there's an inner bleeding that God wants to heal. Yeah. Today, we're gonna to talk about mm. that. Steve, yeah. what does it mean really to, to still you know, love the Lord, yeah. God using you, you, your life, and yet be wounded in a situation or, or in something that happened? This is such a big subject, there's no way we can cover all of it. Yeah. So we'll touch elements, but people need to be aware that if we don't touch the part they're in, it's not because we're neglecting it, we just have limited time. Yeah. The problem with winning and still being wounded is our woundedness can sometimes infect other people. Yeah. So if we're carrying a wound that has never been healed, the wound ends up having an infection. Yeah. And even though I'm still running my race, the wound, the infection can hurt other people. I don't know if you know, but in the Old Testament, the priests, if they ever had a scab on their body, they couldn't minister before the Lord. That's powerful. In other words, if you're wounded, the Lord wouldn't allow you in His presence. Now, yeah. we're under the new covenant. We, he welcomes broken, dysfunctional people and He heals Absolutely, us. Absolutely, yeah. But if I'm walking with woundedness, the problem is some people, when they're wounded, there's a number of things that happen. They actually remove themselves from the fight. Mm -hmm. So they choose to kind of back off. And there's a whole load of people that don't go to church anymore. Yeah. Even though Hebrews commands us in Hebrews 10, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Yeah. People have been disappointed. Somebody said something, did something, disappointed them, disillusionment came in, and they pulled back from the body of Christ. I always say, Jesus has been putting up with his body for 2,000 years. I mean, you go through the dark ages, yeah. Christians killing Christians. Yeah. When we had the revelation a few hundred years ago of full immersion baptism, yeah. some Christians would drown other Christians because of the, their belief in full immersion. Wow. When others got baptized in the spirit, they got kicked out by other Christians. Christians have always been immature with other Christians. We're all a bit dysfunctional. Jesus has been very gracious with his body, the church. If he's been gracious with us for 2,000 years, how much more should we show grace to one another? Wow. Now, That's the so challenge powerful. is when I'm wounded, imagine an animal, a pet, uh, or somebody's dog on the road has been run over, it's damaged, it's hurt in some way. If you go over to help the wounded animal, it's gonna lash out at you, claw at you because it's feeling pain and you're trying to help. It doesn't interpret the fact that you're trying to help. It just thinks, you don't understand where I'm going through, the pain is huge and it lashes out. We do that. Even when we're in pain, hurt people, hurt, hurt people. people yeah. When we get whole, we learn to embrace and even absorb the pain of other people. Jesus was probably the most whole person that ever walked the earth. Yeah. He's on the cross, he's been accused, he's had everything kind of thrown at him, people are spitting on him. I mean, it's a horrible thought. The Son of God, who's holding their very life by the power of his word, mm -hmm. and they're saying, prove who you are, spitting at him. And the Bible says the only thing he said was, Father, would you forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Wow. When you're mature, you can take the accusations and the pain of others and you absorb it and intercession rises up. Wow. That's what Jesus did. Wow. And in those moments, we grow in our authority. When we can take painful trials and the stuff we go through and we absorb it by the grace of God. It doesn't mean that we become a mat that people walk on. I still have what we call faithful conversations with people. I still have to say, hey, that's not right. That's okay. But there are times that you look over an offense, that you can't be touchy all the time. Now, there may be some people watching who are wounded and they're hearing this and they're like that animal lashing out. You don't understand what I went through. You don't understand what yeah. they did. I don't, but I know what Jesus went through. I know what I've been through. You can either become bitter and bitter or you can become better. It's a choice that we make. You know, the, the powerful revelation I, I've found in all of this is that God has given us the keys yeah. to overcome the wounds that are inflicted through life, through the things of this world. You know, 
one of the great tragedies is when wounds cause our hearts to become so hard yeah. that we don't hear his voice anymore. Yeah. You know, a great preacher, a powerful preacher once said to me, he said, son, be careful that you don't preach while you're still bleeding. Yeah. That when, when we feel like we're wounded, we, we've got to deal with the issues. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I, I preach this, that, that the Bible, Jesus said, he said, deny yourself, take up your cross yeah. and follow after me. What does that mean, the, the denial part? It means that we have to die yeah. and sometimes even in our wounds, we, we can't live in agreement with that. Yep. The second we, we feel that we have a right to be bitter, a right We're for vengeance, yep. a right that, well, they did that to me, now I'm going to do that to them, yep. that the enemy has an inroad yep. to cause that to become a, a stronghold oh. in our life. And, and it will defile many other people. Yeah. Hebrews 12, be careful that a bitter root doesn't take root in you, bitterness yeah. doesn't take root. Yeah. Start as a little root, it'll grow up, and it says, and it will defile many. Wow. I've met people even in ministry who are great and powerful, but they carry an edge. There's an offense, there's a bitterness. It, you can't always put your finger on it unless you're tender yourself. And you realize somewhere back in the day, they've been wounded and never dealt with it. That's what I meant by yep. still bleeding. Yep. When Absolutely. preaching, because sometimes on the pulpit, you, you can be you preaching can, in the spirit, can, yep. but that wound shows itself. So you, you don't just give what you're saying, you give what you carry. Yeah. I've seen it in marriages as well. Yeah. One person who's got bitter yeah. and now the children are infected, the spouse is infected. That's why it, it's no new thing. If the writer of Hebrews said, be careful, when bitterness comes in, offense comes in, turns into bitterness, it'll impact a lot of other people's lives. You know, for a powerful, powerful thing, and, and I really feel the, the anointing on this, Steve, as we're talking is, you know, Jesus spoke about the wheat and the tear growing together. Yep. Sometimes we can look at our lives and we see the anointing. We see the favor of God. We yep. see God using our lives. And yet what we don't realize is, is that that wound, that 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 situation can, can grow yep. even as the anointing Absolutely. is growing in our life. That it's the very thing that actually destroys God's purpose yep. in our life yep. because it manifests at the time where God is bringing the greatest exposure to your life as far yeah. as being used by it's Him. It's His grace, really, that He keeps using people, even yeah. in their brokenness. Yeah. But we should never use that as a way of saying, I'm okay, He obviously is fine with my bitterness. Yeah. Instead, I think Smith Wigglesworth said this years ago, he said, every trial is a lifting place to greater glory. Wow. So Powerful. when you go through a trial, you're going to ask yourself, what am I learning here? Yeah. How am I dying here? Lord, help yeah. me to absorb the immaturity of other people. I'm not going to say anything, but I'm going to keep my heart clean. The water of the Word, when you get a wound, you wash it. The Word will wash it. The oil of the Holy Spirit. In the old days, they'd put oil on because it formed a protective layer. Yeah. So living in the water of the Word, living in the oil of the Holy Spirit, letting Him wash over you, worshipping, saying, would you take the pain away? It's hurting right now. I don't know what to do with it. And He will pull those darts out. He will pour in His oil and you will find the healing beginning to take place. And then thirdly, Word, Spirit, it's the people of God. You've got to be in good relationship. There's a lot of people flitting around everywhere, but they've got no deep, accountable relationships. Yeah. I'm not just talking about running with people in ministry. I mean people that you're going to be open with, vulnerable Connected. with, that yeah. they can speak into your life and you won't push them away. Isolation is one of the greatest weapons the enemy uses yeah. in these situations. Mm -hmm. That he tries to convince us that we have a right to feel the way yeah. we feel. Absolutely. Are there any other keys, Steve, that you found that you know, maybe these are, are some, you know, people have gone through great tragedies, maybe abuse. Are there any other keys that you found that, that we can use to, to help us heal? I've, I've met people who've been abused and they're the most beautiful, loving, gracious people today. And I've met people on this side who've been abused, but maybe not as much as these. And they're the most bitter, accusing people today. I've realized it's not what happens to your life that's important. It's what you do with what happens to you. Wow. So just saying, well, I went through a rough deal. Well, so is everybody in some way. And I'm not trying to minimize anybody's pain, yeah. but the Word of God, the oil of the Holy Spirit, true community, and then making a commitment to forgive. I think forgiveness is perhaps one of the most powerful keys. I think it's Paul in Corinthians who said, don't be unaware of the enemy's devices. Mm, powerful. And he's got devices and one of his schemes is to get us to hold on to our offense. When I forgive, it, the literal Greek translation, chorizo, is that we're releasing. 
So if you had offended me and I've got unforgiveness, when I forgive, I release you. When I hold unforgiveness, I don't hurt you, I hurt me. There's a powerful revelation there because forgiveness is not a feeling. No, it's, it's a, a decision. decision. Yeah. And, and that's the difference. I've forgiven people and still felt the pain. And I have to keep saying, Lord, I have forgiven them. Would you help me deal with the pain? Sometimes it's lasted a few weeks, but here's what I found. The older I've got, because I do this more, I travel this road, it's harder for me to stay offended very long. Yeah. It impacts everything, so I yeah. can't do it. I can't stay offended at my wife or one of the kids or somebody at church. I know the quicker I deal with it, the quicker I move into a place of freedom. You know, I want to speak to all those of you that you're not watching this by accident. You know, I've found in my own life when I feel like I'm about to take offense or someone has spoken against me or maybe I feel wounded, that I will go alone and be with the Lord. And you know, you can't be in His presence for long without realizing, you know, Lord, maybe I've offended other people. Maybe, you know, I've been the one that's caused wounds in other people's lives, that we have to just rest in Him because he, his, his healing balm will bring great restoration in our lives. Listen, it's been so awesome to have you, Steve. Fantastic. That we could keep talking about this nonstop, but this has been Face to Face. Listen, if you're enjoying Face to Face, you can go to our YouTube. There's so many others that'll so bless your life. We'll see you next time on Face to Face.